We're going to do a two-part video series on making molds and casts of fossils. When we have a large, complicated specimen, we usually send that out to a casting company. But small and relatively simple specimens we can make in-house. So in part one, we're going to look at making the first part of our mold. Now we're going to be making a two-part mold, a mold that is two separate pieces. So we're going to start with a substrate that we can set our specimen on. And we're going to use clay to make a nice level substrate and press the specimen down into it. Now I've covered the clay here with a sheet of um, plastic wrap just to keep the clay off of the specimen so that the oils from the clay don't get onto the specimen. Um, the specimen in this case is a tooth from a beaked whale we collected from Carmel Church and we press that down into the clay. Now we're taking a glass rod and um, we're pushing alignment holes into the clay. Those are going to be important later for keeping the, the two halves of our mold aligned. Now we're, what I'm doing is um, pressing those same glass rods into the clay making channels from the outer edge of the clay to the specimen. We're going to need a way to pour our casting resin into the mold and we also need an escape route for the air to get out and so that's why we need two channels one for the resin to go in one for the air to escape now we need to build a box to hold the molding material in when we pour it and I'm building that box out of Legos um, these, this way we can keep the, the size of the mold no bigger than is necessary because the molding material is quite expensive. So we're going to build a little custom box that will hold the liquid casting material in. Uh, one thing I found with using the Legos is that uh, while there are a lot of knockoff brands, the actual real and relatively expensive Legos um, tend to work quite a bit better. They make a tighter seal and uh, keep the, the casting material from leaking out around the blocks. The, the um, molding material is fairly expensive and so we want to build our box as small as possible around the specimen while still giving enough room around the edges for the molding material to not uh, tear or be penetrated very easily. And the less of it we can use the better. Now, we're going to make our mold out of a two-part, one-to-one, self-leveling, room temperature vulcanizing silicone rubber. Now, it sounds really complicated, but pretty much all it means is that we're going to make our molding compound is made by mixing two materials together in a one-to-one -one ratio. Self-leveling means that it's liquid when you first make it, so it pours. Um, room temperature vulcanizing means it solidifies at room temperature. We don't need to bake this or heat it up or anything to get it to cure. Um, it's a silicone rubber, so it's relatively inert. It pretty much doesn't stick to anything except it itself. Um, and since it's one-to-one, -one, we need to be quite precise, make sure we get um, the same amount of each of the two materials. Um, as I'm pouring these things, I pour one and put the cap back on so we don't get the caps mixed up. And then we mix the two parts together, making sure that we um, stay at that one-to-one -one ratio. So we're going to use our popsicle stick there to scrape down the insides of the cup, make sure we get all of it out. This stuff takes several hours to set, so we've got plenty of working time here. Um, we don't have to rush through this. We can, we can take our time and make sure we get all this, the parts mixed together completely. And then uh, we 
thoroughly mix them until the color is uniform throughout and those the two parts are different colors um, and that helps you see if they've been mixed thoroughly. I'm not mixing this very quickly yet. Um, I don't want to get air bubbles down in this mixture. The mixed silicone is pretty viscous and if we get bubbles in there that make it into the final mold then those bubbles can kind of ruin the mold. We'll end up with big globs of resin when we make our cast. Now with the, the molding compound mix, we're ready to start pouring it. We pour into a corner initially and pour it fairly slowly to keep bubbles from getting into the mixture as we pour it and we'll gradually fill our box up until the specimen is completely covered. I've mixed a pretty large batch here and I've actually got a second mold ready to go. Um, so I usually do that so that we don't end up accidentally wasting material by mixing more than we need and it's a little bit easier to mix larger quantities than smaller ones.